Hi, I'm Juan with Comics on Comics, and I'm here at San Diego Comic Con. Now, for those of you who saw our uh, Transformers coverage, you saw that we had Tom Frank talking about robots, and then we had Tony Prado talking about Transformers. Well, he's here and he's set up his own booth, and we're just going to talk to him about something other than Transformers. Why are these so expensive if they're just plastic little thingies? Um, well, they're, they're, they're considered uh, kind of like vintage toys. They're not super, super old, but some of the figures are almost 20 years old, and some of them are uh, limited editions that weren't at regular retail, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, you know, they, they sell for a premium. That's actually modeled after that uh, larger figure in the back, which was uh, the very first theater premium figure they did in Japan for the Godzilla vs. Destroya film. And that six-inch version is kind of done in homage of that larger figure, and that was only available in the Godzilla 50th anniversary box set in Japan, which was very, very limited. And there were 20 figures in the set, so I break the figures up and sell them separately. And uh, people, instead of paying $700 to 1000 for the box set, they can buy the individual figure for 65 So it's actually a bargain, uh, considering. The black robot thing, this is actually um, the Kiru Mechagodzilla um, from the Godzilla vs. Uh, Godzilla SOS film, uh, which is a, a sequel to Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla 2003. It's a 2004 film, and this particular figure is kind of a, a premium exclusive for a uh, Ito Yokado uh, department store in, in Japan. So it's like one of those limited edition things. Um, some of these other figures. Uh, most of them are made by Bandai, but this figure um, and uh, a few other figures on the table are made by a, uh, a friend's company in Japan. He has a license and he does like limited edition characters that Bandai generally doesn't do. So um, other than that, most of the figures are by Bandai uh, Japan. So what would you consider the holy grail uh, of these toys? Of Godzilla toys, I don't have it, obviously. It would be really, really expensive. The most expensive one is the, the theater premium. Uh, there in the corner, that's why it's on top there. That's uh, a $200 figure and is quite limited and you know has some sort of demand. And it has the tag. The tag, having the tag is actually significant with collectors. If it doesn't have the tag and if it's vintage, it could go for you know 20 to 50% uh, uh, less. So you know, you have a figure that has the tag, it, you know, you can get sometimes significantly more money. Because that's really the only packaging it had. Yeah, right. exactly, exactly. So, um, yeah, it's important to collectors here and in Japan. What about this uh, Destro over here? Why is he? Why is he one hundred twenty-five dollars for a Destro? That Destro was a San Diego Comic Con exclusive two years ago, and it sold out. I think either the first or the second night that it was sold. You know, out of a five-day, four and a half-day show, so it was very, very popular. There's two versions of that. There was another run in, I guess, in Hong Kong or something. So the, vex the very first one, it has a different, you know, stamp on the on the card, so people, the collectors know. So that one goes for about uh, upwards to like three hundred dollars, and the figure only cost nine dollars at the show. And then this one's from the second run, and you know, I sell them anywhere from like one hundred twenty-five to one hundred fifty dollars. Over here, we have like the Lion set for like four hundred dollars. Now, I I played with that and destroyed it as a kid. Um, do you want to buy my old toys uh, that are beat up for for a couple hundred dollars? <laughs> well, I have to I have to sell things at a profit, so you know, obviously, it's not gonna I'm not gonna buy for as much as I sell. Um, also, you know, that one's in the box, and you know, in mint condition, so that makes mine sense. mine has teeth marks on it. Yeah, is that you're you're probably <laughs> you're probably not gonna get much for them, maybe a few bucks a piece. Uh, yeah, he generally buys that stuff at the swap meet for like two, three bucks a piece. So, you know, um, if they were mint and cherry, yeah, yeah, then we could talk. But the, the teeth marks are in mint condition. Um, <laughs> now there are also all kinds of toys here that I've I've never actually seen before. Um, what what's that Z Zet train? What is that? An old Korean knockoff from a long, long time ago. And actually, that toy was not made in the United States, so it's not a knockoff of a U.S. toy. So. Um, but yeah, there's some collectors that like these, like, you know, it was actually from my personal collection, but I just decided to sell it. So I don't expect to sell it, but yeah, if Sony wants to buy it, you know, they can have it. Is that, that's not a Transformer, is it? Yeah, it is a Transformer. This was, um, well, Hasbro's was called Alternators, and uh, theirs was called Vinyl Tech. And they decided at one point to 
you know, make, you know, kind of combine like these cutesy girl characters with the robots to, to kind of cross market and get, you know, this crowd to buy the Transformer toys. It didn't quite work. So it didn't, it didn't last too long. There was this one and uh, uh, they had another series called Kiss Play, which was kind of strange, very, very strange. And a lot of US collectors didn't like it. So, and in fact, a lot of this Japanese Transformer collectors didn't like it either. What about these shoes? I mean, those are, uh, are those officially licensed Nike Transformer shoes? Yeah, that, those are to coincide with the uh, new Transformers film. Um, those are sold at uh, House of Hoops, I believe, is, it, which is a Foot Locker. Uh, and I think those came from the Beverly Hills location. There's only, there's one in New York, one in uh, Chicago, one in Los Angeles, um, Beverly Hills. And I bought those from some customers uh, of mine. and. Uh, I'm selling them here, but they are officially licensed. They're just shoes. They don't transform. Um, they're limited edition. Uh, I think one-time release. They had some foreign release as well, but uh, but worldwide, very very limited. And what's this? Uh, what's this over here in the the black boxes? Oh, um, those are some prototypes that an associate of mine gave me. Um, you know, the hard economic times and everything. He has to, you know, save his house. So, uh, yeah, uh, they're from a, an old 80s animated show, which uh, I'm familiar with a little bit, but uh, not, you know, I wasn't a big, huge fan of. But, uh, yeah, he wants to sell those for a significant amount of money to help pay for uh, some bill problems. So, what, what is someone like you who collects toys and, and is a dealer, what do you look for at a convention like this? I would look, look for, a, for a rare toy at a bargain. So um, there's a few guys here that sell vintage stuff, but generally it's stuff that either I'm not interested in or something I already have, or it's way overpriced. So generally that's what happens here, but occasionally you'll find a bargain, but um, you, I really have to do that on Wednesday <laughs> or, and Thursday, but uh, sometimes they, you know, they don't stock things until the last day as well. So uh, occasionally I'll find something, although not in the last couple of years, to be honest. Let's say you know you you grew up uh, with a specific uh, you know toy company, and you're now old enough that you could start afford buying you know like Transformers. If someone who wants to start getting into collecting Transformers from their childhood, what what would be the best place for them to go? Best place for them to go, I would suggest the internet and try to find some uh, websites of reputable dealers such as myself. Uh, and, and what's your website? Oh, uh, yeah, good plug here. Uh, www.temptingtoys.net. Not .com, it's .net. Uh, again, that's temptingtoys.net. And uh, I know it might sound kind of strange, but that was before the internet days and everything that I came up with that name. I could suggest eBay. Problem with eBay is that um, if it's not a reputable dealer that you're aware of, you don't know whether you're getting a real item or a knockoff. So I don't sell any knockoffs other than, you know, that's from my personal collection I bring from the show. I don't put it on my, my business website, you know, finding a reputable dealer. And, you know, you, can just, you just go around to some of these uh, Transformers uh, fan sites and go on the uh, message boards and, you know, ask them who's a good dealer, who's not a good dealer. So it's very, very simple. Uh, very, very little research you have to do.